Trista, okay. Trista Whipple from CPS, EFS. All right. Did you have your attorney with you today or the DA? Oh, no. My oh, supervisor? Some CP, uh, no, some CPS workers, they bring their own attorney. Oh. Amity Dorman? No? no. Oh, okay. They let you go go alone today. Let's have you sworn in, sworn in Crystal. You do solemnly swear and testimony that in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, if you got Yes. You okay. If you could spell your first name and your last name for the record. Crystal, K-R-Y-S-T-A-L. Whipple, W H I P P L E. I P P L E. And who's your witness? Yes. Miss Barnes, your uh, witness. You, were, uh, you recall that you were called here by the defendant and they conducted a direct examination of you, correct? Yes. And you've been called here via subpoena, correct? Correct. And you and I haven't mm -hmm. had an opportunity to speak yet, correct? Correct. So what I'm doing now is I'm starting my cross examination of you. Um, do you prefer to be called Miss Whipple or Crystal? Crystal's fine. Okay. Um, and Crystal, can you tell me on approximately how many occasions have you spoken to Alyssa to date? Ooh. Approximately. Approximately. Yes. From the beginning? From the yes. <laughs> Over 50? Yeah. Over 100? Probably pretty close, yeah. Okay. And how would you describe Alyssa's mental stability? Um, at this time or at the beginning? Uh, why don't we do at this time and why don't we do then at thereafter at the beginning? Okay. Um, at this time, due to the um, case being so stressful and strenuous, um, we are concerned about her mental health as we are with everybody, all the, parent, all the parental figures involved in this case because it is so high and strenuous that um, we want, we're unsure of how everybody's mental health is doing okay because if your mental health is not okay, then it's gonna impact the child. So we, we don't know if she or any of the parties are in any mental health services at this time. Um, at the beginning, um, she was participating in individual therapy at our office and then um, she had stopped that, and I don't know if she's seeing any professional therapists at this time. Do you know why she stopped therapy? Um, she was doing pretty well in therapy. From what I um, spoke with her therapist about, she was doing okay, um, but she was also worried about um, how that might look on her case. Okay, so you think that she stopped therapy for litigation purposes? Um, not necessarily, no. So what do you mean about that, that she was concerned about her case? Well, just because um, the record, she, she was worried that maybe things might be skewed or um, put into <coughs> record that might not necessarily need to be there. In your meetings and conversations with Alyssa, did you have any concern that she suffers from emotional dysregulation disorder? That's not what we diagnosed her with, no. Okay, what have you diagnosed her with? Alyssa uh, was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Anything anxiety. else? And anxiety. Anxiety. And why is it that emotional dysregulation disorder was ruled out? Um, I wasn't Thanks. a therapist, so I cannot speak to that. Can you describe emotional dysregulation disorder to the court? Uh, emotional dysregulation disorder is a disorder that people are unable to control their emotions and express things in appropriate manners. Okay. Um, and do you have any concerns that Alyssa has burned or uh, injured Preston? Um, the last allegation of um, injury of Preston was in mother's care, but there's been a lot of um, um, marks and bruises on the child throughout the entire case um, in both parties there and we're unsure of where these are coming from we're not sure what's going on we don't know if he's doing it if somebody else is doing it the injuries I, I can't speak to because I'm not um, CPS we when we see those marks we make sure to notify the proper authorities 
The marks that you've seen on, well, first of all, let me establish. Have you seen marks on Preston? Yes. On how many occasions? Multiple. And the marks that you saw on Preston on those multiple occasions, were they consistent with any skin disorder? Uh, I'm not a medical examiner. I would not know. Okay. Um, can you describe the approximate time and the marks that you witnessed? The most recent mark that we witnessed was in December of 2019. Okay. And tell me what you saw in December of 2019. He had a circular um, uh, mark on the middle of his back. Okay, and what did it look like to you? It looked like a burn mark. And did, was it scabbed over? It was scabbed. Okay, and did you do any sort of inquiry as to when was the last time the paternal family had Preston in their care in relation to the day you viewed what appeared to you to be a burn mark? Um, I was unclear of whose care he was in at the time and what was going on. Why were you unclear as to whose care he was in at the time? I see him every week and I know that the weekends are different from when the case first started and so I just didn't know whose weekend it was. How did you learn that the paternal family initially had every weekend and sometime thereafter had every other weekend? Um, I recall in December mom um, retold me that she had, she's. I'm been, sorry, I, I'm going to stop sorry, there. I can't hear you. Can you restart over? Yeah. Mom told me um, in December that she had him every other weekend or, yeah, every other weekend. Okay. And the uh, circular mark on his back that appeared to be a burn mark to you, did you <coughs> inquire of the mother how the child obtained that burn mark? Um, I spoke to the mother about it, yes. Okay, and what did she tell you? She indicated that um, Preston had been hurting himself, and um, she wasn't sure how that mark got there, um, but she was spending family time with him, and they were having a great time, and then the next thing she knows, he has a mark on his body, and she felt like it was due to um, an object on the back of the couch. This is the only way she could think of him doing it. Did you believe her? Um, she felt genuine. Okay. Did you believe her? She was genuine in her exposure, so I mean, I would assume she was correct if she was believing that that would be. Did you consider the possibility that she was lying to you about how that injury took place on Preston's back? I did discuss that with her. Okay. And what did she say in that discussion? She said that that she didn't do it and that um, Preston has been hurting himself and this is a repetitive place that he hurts himself. Um, did you look at the pictures of the various injuries to Preston's back over the course of time? I have recently, yes. Okay, and uh, how did you obtain those photographs? Um, when I met with Stacy. Okay, and w in reviewing those photographs, did the, did the injury on the back seem to be consistent yes. over the course of time? Yes. Can you describe for the court, over the course of time, what the injury on the back looked like? Um, it's a consistent mark in the same area of his back. It's the middle to lower part of his back. It's a circular um, round, almost the size of a cigarette. That's why the only thing I can think of is a cigarette burn mark. Um, there's three areas. Um, it's almost in a triangle shape. He has two scarrings on the back of, the, of, the, of his back, and then he had the mark that I recently observed in December. Did the mark on his back appear to you to be more consistent with a burn or with being injured by a pumice stone and a screw in the couch? Um, it's not a screw in the couch. What is it? It's, um, it's hard to explain. FYI, the object is here, yes. Sergeant Barber. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, is, is Are you that marking it? Is, thank you, Your Honor. That actually would be easier. Um, isn't it true that you are in presently in possession? No, strike that. Isn't it true that as of this morning, you were in possession of the item on the couch that is alleged to have injured Preston? Yes. <laughs> and isn't it true you brought it here to court today? Yes. And isn't it true that you left it with the marshals? Yes. Okay. Um, that is here in the courtroom. If, Exhibit um, number. I'm sorry? Exhibit number. Uh, what's our next Next number, Ms. Clark? 
for plaintiff. Two ninety eight. And we'll put a sticker on it. We'll mark it for identification. One moment. Does opposing counsel need to see the exhibit? Yes, please. Put a mark. A mar I'll put in. Sorry, put a sticker on it, Nelson. Nelson. It is a metal object from couch, sofa. You guys need to see it? Yes, I yeah. would like to post it. Okay. Metal objects and couch. Exhibit. So, I think so, but too. Okay, question. Uh, any Thank objection you. to 298? Two, you sure it's 298? Okay. Any objection to 298? No. Okay, it'll be admitted into evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Crystal, is what is now being identified as Exhibit 298, is this the item from the couch that came into your possession uh, with the allegation that this is the manner in which Prest Preston harmed himself um, in December of 2019? Yeah. Okay, can you tell me how it is you came into possession of Exhibit 298? Um, this came into our possession through our RMH worker that works in the home. Through what? Our RMH worker, Rehabilitation and Health Services. Katie. Is that Katie? Katie. Okay. RMH. So, did Katie remove that from the home and brought it to you? Um, mother removed it from the couch and handed it to Katie so that Preston wouldn't hurt himself with it anymore. And then um, who brought it to you? Katie. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to inspect Exhibit 298? Yes. Did anybody explain to you uh, in what manner Preston allegedly harmed himself with Exhibit 298? Yes. Who explained that to you? Um, I had mother explain it to me as well as Katie. Okay. And can you tell the court what was mother's description as to how Preston harmed himself with Exhibit 298. Um, the, this back half of it was in the couch. With all the screws, correct? Yeah, all the screws were in the couch. Mm -hmm. The only thing sticking out was the end piece right here. Mm -hmm. And there is a um, prong that we bent in. It was sticking out. And um, Preston um, described that he was doing push-ups on the couch. So he... He was doing backwards push-ups. He had his hands on the back of the couch, and he was going up and down like that along the end mark of the screw, the prong. How old is Preston presently? He's six. Is it consistent with your uh, treating of children age six that they do exercises such as push-ups? They, they're learning how to work out, so I wouldn't say it's abnormal. Okay. And do you, in your opinion, do you find that that metal piece would be consistent with a mark on Preston's back that appears like a burn mark? No. Okay. Did that raise concerns enough to you that you are not being told accurately how Preston obtained what appeared to be a burn mark in his back? It did raise concerns. Okay. And you also spoke with Alyssa regarding this, correct? Yes. And what did Alyssa tell you? Uh, she said that Preston um, 
was has been hurting himself and that this is the only thing that she could think of that he would be doing to hurt himself with. Did she also say to you at some point in time that Preston allegedly was also hurting himself with a penis stone? Yeah. Did you ever ask Alyssa how it is that Preston is allegedly harming himself with both a pumice stone and this metal piece on this couch and yet they um, make the same markings on the back, two different objects? I have discussed that. Okay. Did that raise alarms with you that perhaps Alyssa is not telling you the two, true story that there's a metal piece on a couch and there's a pumice stone allegedly uh, at his grasp and they they make the same marking and, and excuse me, counsel, and they make the same marking and both markings appear like a uh, burn on the back? Um, we did discuss that and it did, it makes us concerned. Um, she also doesn't understand where this might be coming from at the same time. Did it raise enough alarms for you that you made any kind of reporting to authorities? Yeah, anytime he comes to the office with a, a mark, we call CPS and the police. How many times has Hope Counseling called CPS and or the police? Um, I can recall off the top of my head three or four times. Okay. Um, now you had mentioned that you had, uh, thank you Marshall, <laughs> you okay. had mentioned that you had uh, witnessed multiple marks on Preston. You identified the December 2019 Mark, can you tell me another one? Um, another mark was when he came with the Puma Stone. Can you give me the approximate date of that? I want to say it was January of last year, 2019. Okay, um, can you tell me what you witnessed in approximately January of 2019 on Preston's person that you found concerning? Um, it was a similar mark on his back. Okay, he and like this, but I don't believe that was the circular ones. I believe it was an actual scratch mark. Okay, and did the scratch mark was it fresh or was it scabbing over? It was scabbing over. Okay, and at that point in time, did you conduct any kind of inquiry to determine when the last time Preston was in the care of the paternal family? Um, I believe we we discussed um, when he was in his paternal family's care. And do you recall how many days prior to you seeing that mark, Preston was last with the paternal family? I don't recall. Um, were you aware that there was a period of time in January of 2019 where the paternal family had no visitation time with Preston? Yes. Uh, are you aware of the date when the paternal family ceased having uh, visitation with Preston? I might be wrong, but I thought it was the end of January, beginning of February. Um, if, if you were to learn that the last time the paternal family saw Preston was December 16, 2018, and you witnessed that mark in January of 2019, would it be fair to say that that mark could not have occurred with the paternal family, given what you, what you saw on his back? I could be wrong on the date that I saw it. Um, do you believe that it was in December of 2019 or January of 2019? All I remember is that I recall that he was still having visits with both sides of the, the family um, at the time of the mark. And how was it that you believe that he was having visits with both sides of the family at the time of that mark? Um, I was informed um, through court reports um, of the custody arrangements. So you received a court order regarding the custody arrangement, is that correct? Mother provided the court, um, the, the custody arrangements between both parties. Okay, and did you do anything to determine whether or not she provided an authentic court order with you or that it could be an inauthentic order? No, I didn't. Okay, um, is there anything that you can refer to that you would be able to determine whether or not that mark that you saw uh, was in December or January 2019? Would it be in your notes? It would have to be in my notes. Okay. Um, give me two more notes. Give, find me her notes. Go to the table of contents. Um, she can't <coughs> You have 
have, um, while he's looking for that, you brought a manila envelope with you, and I understand that you have an original copy of the notes on Preston since from the time um, you last provided notes through the present, correct? Correct. Um, and you did not dis disseminate that to councils because you are, uh, because of the HIPAA um, and privacy rights, and so you wanted to bring them directly to the court, correct? Correct. Your Honor, at this time we would request that um, two copies be made of Preston's um, therapy notes at the last court hearing. The court had ordered for uh, Ms. Whipple to provide her updated uh, records, but I think that she was erring on the side of caution due to privacy issues, and so she only brought an original, but I think we, we need those. Um, what's your official title? I am, uh, I'm a Hope Counseling Services. I'm a licensed social worker, um, clinical intern. So it's also and Preston was referred to you by CPS? Yeah. Preston was referred, mom brought Preston um, for herself. CPS Yeah, CPS provided the CPS information CPS uh, made the referral. Okay. And um, what's this thing with HIPAA? You have your, your therapy notes? Yeah, I have my current therapy notes, but due to um, things within the notes, we're concerned about Preston's overall safety um, due to possible cohorting that might be going on. And so we want to make sure that... Okay, Council, I'll make sure you heard that. Ms. Whipple said we're... Um, Hope Counseling is concerned about Preston's safety based on what's in her notes. And um, I think you said the word coercion. Okay. Um, the safety issue. But these two sides want to know what are what's in the notes. So basically, these are things that Preston is telling you. Um, hmm. Depends on the, the level of the safety threat, I would presume. I would normally have a bar a bar conference with council, but one is unrepresented. But can I Let's have a see. moment, Your Honor? Can I speak with Mary Ann for one yeah. minute? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I stipulate that I will not go in but with the bars. Um, we'll just have counsel. Okay. So yeah. And technically, like, you can represent There's her for today if you want to. So, but that's, she, okay. Uh, no objection? So I could talk with the lawyers? Oh, yes. And yeah. Marion will defer to the lawyers so we can talk about any um, safety concerns with Preston. Okay, so uh, let me stand by. Let me talk to the lawyers. Just uh, just a few minutes, sit tight.